So let's look at some of the changes, the, the general changes, as well as some of the parts and sketching changes within Inventor 2026. I'm going to select new from the quick access toolbar. And what you're going to find in the upper right corner is new options to copy the template path, as well as to quickly navigate and click open and fire up your Windows Explorer and take you to that template's location. Now, I don't want to create a new file. What I'm actually looking to do is to open a file. So again, from the quick access toolbar, it's the same from the file menu. I'm going to click open. And notice that within the open dialog is I can now see the active project. And it's just the name. It's not the full path. It makes it easier to read. I'm not going to be able to change it right now because I have files open. But what this does is it allows me to fire up the projects dialog. And I could view the settings. And if I didn't have any, any files open, I could also change the active project. Notice at the top here, just below the project, is that the workspace and the libraries, so your content center and your libraries, are now integrated into the open dialog. So no longer do you have to, you know, more difficultly find these. They're just right there now. Now I'm going to go into a folder and notice that when I select an inventor drawing that I get a thumbnail. I see the version and or the version that it was last saved in. And then notice the options are now visible. I don't have to click options to fire up a separate dialog. They're just right there. Also notice that I can access the files I properties and make changes to that properties without actually having to open the file. Now, if I pick an assembly, you'll see that I get access to load in the express mode as well set the active model state and design view. So this bracket is the component that I'm looking to do. There's no model states. I'm just going to pick with the last active design view and I'm going to click open. So let's start a new sketch. From the sketch tab, I'm going to go to the line menu. From the line menu, I'm going to pick midpoint line. Midpoint line was, was added in one of the dot releases in 2025. But what I'm able to do is I'm able to select the midpoint and then create the line from that midpoint. Now I either can pick the, the endpoint of it or I could type in the desired distances. Now what's new in 2026 is notice that it will accept uh, uppercase IN. It will also accept an uppercase MM. So, you know, in the engineering type world, we work with capitals quite a bit and we have cap locks on. So instead of having to worry about, you know, are they big or small, is I'm able to use now capital I N and capital M M to, to enter in that value. So this part, I have a hole and a chamfer, which I'd like to pattern. So I'm going to select the pattern command. So I'm going to do a rectangular pattern and let's select that hole in that chamfer. Now notice that it is now using the modernized panel approach. So I have this panel as opposed to dialogue. And notice that all the options are available kind of linearly. So there's not separate tabs. I don't have to bounce back and forth. Notice that the different selection modes are down the right side here. I can also now toggle between polar circular patterns as well as sketch driven patterns without having to exit the command and go pick the desired option. Now that I have the feature selected, I'm going to set the first direction. Let's use this edge here. And I'm going to say that I'd like to have four of them. Now, I could come in here and change the distance. So if I want them evenly spaced, whether I want the fitted, sorry, the incremental, or I want them fitted. So maybe I want them all within, you know, 12 units. But I do want to go with the incremental option. But what I want is I want a irregular pattern. So I'm going to click the irregular pattern. And now what it's doing now is asking me to set the distances. So I'm going to click the little green plus sign and I'm going to say, well, I'd like these two patterns and I want to have six millimeters between them. I'm going to click the green plus sign again because between this one, what I'd like to have is I'd like to have 10 millimeters, which has a bit much. Let's change that to nine. Now let's minimize direction A because I'm done with direction A and let's look at direction B. And instead of picking an edge, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the Y distance. It's the wrong way. So let's flip that. And what I'd like in the Y distance is I'd like to have three units. Now again, I could say, well, I'd like to have five millimeters between each one, or maybe I'd like to have a total of 14 millimeters and half 
have it fit those. But again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the regular pattern. I'm going to select the first instances and say, well, in this case, I really just wanted five millimeters. So we'll make that three. Let's do that again. We'll pick that last one because this last one is what we want five. See? Let's make this six just so we can see it a little bit more. Notice that the options for the creation mode still exist. I have the options to, to change the extents, which was introduced in 2025 or 2024. I can't remember. But I'm content now with my settings. So I'm going to click OK and notice that it's created that pattern. Now, if I look at the, the pattern here, I can still see all the occurrences. So nothing has changed in this regard. So if there's one here I didn't want, I can suppress it. So I can still suppress individual instances. Now let's just double click on it to go back into it and notice that everything still exists, all the settings. So if I realize that this pattern is, is a bit too much spacing in there, I can actually change any of the settings as well as remove instances or change the instances included in this irregular pattern. So we'll click OK to update that and we can see that's changed. OK, well, continuing with what's, what's new here, let's go in and let's create a new parameter. So I'm going to create a new parameter and I'm going to add in a true false. And I'm going to say cut out and I'm going to say false. So I've just created this new parameter. I've set it to false and I'm going to click done. Where I'm able to use this parameter now, what's new is let's take this extrusion, this, this cutout, and I'm going to go into its properties. And notice now is I can take this feature name and I can say suppress it if cutout is false. So if we don't want the cutout, right, set the false, we'll say that this is going to be suppressed. What's new here is I'm able to use a parameter to drive the feature suppression. So I'll click OK, and we can see that it's, it's suppressed that feature. If I go into the parameters and I take that cutout feature and I say true as we do want it, I'll click done. Notice that it's, it's been restored. I have a part here. It's a multi-solid part. So notice that there's multiple solids contained within it. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to simplify it. So what's new is that within the part environment is the simplify command is now available. And it works very similar to how the assembly simplify works. It's just that it's driven by features and bodies. Now I'm not going to apply a preset. So you can see that there's some quick presets here where you can quickly say, hey, remove all small parts and features. But I'm just going to say no preset and I'm going to go through and I'm going to set my own. But just like any other panel driven feature is that you can create your own presets. So you can go through it once, set your presets, and then it's only always available to you. Now, perhaps what I'd like to do is I'd like to simplify this and I'm going to replace kind of the whole part by an envelope. So this is useful when you're just kind of wanting the kind of the bounding box, like the no touch zones, you know, to insert it somewhere else and kind of work around. I can also go one, one level higher and say what I would like to do is I'd like to simplify each solid individually. So each solid or body of the multi-body. And I can change this and say, well, you know what, cylinders in this case would actually be better. And I can have this, simplify this into cylinders forming. I can also go and I can select. So perhaps what I'd like to do is I'd like to select this part. And again, I want the, the cylinder. And I'd like to have this one as a cylinder. So you can see that I can go and I can select those specifically. I can also, if I'm using replace with envelopes, is maybe I'd like to exclude. So I'd like to do all the bodies except for. So then I could go pick one and say, don't simplify this one. Don't include this body. Don't do anything with this body, actually, is I don't want it included with my simplified part. So in this case, maybe what I'd like to do is I'd like to take these, these screws and say, you know what, we're not going to include them whatsoever. So I don't need them in my simplified version. Now I can also start removing features, either just say, hey, I want all the holes gone, or perhaps what you'd like to do is arrange. So maybe I'd like to remove all fillets that are less than four millimeters. So I can set a range on that. And notice that you can do things like chamfers and pockets, also tunnels. And if there are certain features that you do wanna keep, so perhaps this hole right here is important. 
I'm going to include that. So maybe I need that because I want to mount something to this, even in a simplified state. Now, if you want to see what it's going to look like beforehand, is you can click the preview button and you can see it goes through and it generates the preview. So instead of it removing features on the fly as you're updating them and you have to kind of wait for it, you can just take the hit and do the preview at the end. Now I am going to remove internal bodies and fill internal voids. So that's if you had some overlapping features, faces, you know, it created kind of a, a gap. It would, it would merge those or fill those for you. Now I've got the, the settings where I want. I'm going to click OK. Notice the simplified version that it's created. And what I could do is I could actually create a model state to help manage this. So I'm just going to right click. Let's create a new, new model state. We'll call it simplify. And I'm going to go back to the primary because when I'm in the primary, I want this one suppressed. So I'm just going to right click on it, pick suppressed. And now what I can do is I can go back and forth and I can see that I've got the simplified version because of the simplified feature and then the primary feature. So to this part, I'm going to add a shell. And what we're going to see is that in Inventor 2026, the shell feature has been modernized to that panel palette approached. So now everything's in one place. So you don't have to bounce back and forth between different tabs. And the features will change depending on the options that you select. Where I'm going to start is I'm just going to start with the sharp corner option. Let's pick a face to exclude. So we'll pick this top face. Let's increase the thickness, let's say to two millimeters. And perhaps what I'd like is I'd like to have the bottom face be thicker. So I'm going to use the override sets. I'm going to click the, the plus sign. Let's pick that bottom face and let's change this to four millimeters. So I do want the top face removed. I want the bottom face to be a bit thicker, everything else to be two millimeters. We'll click OK, and we can see that it's applied that feature. OK, well, let's delete the shell, and let's use the new option. So we'll select shell from the ribbon. Notice that we can do sharp corners. We can also do rounded corners. I'm going to pick the top face like I did before. And let's just increase this thickness. We can also change the direction. And notice that when I change direction, notice that Inventor starts to fillet the edges. So the participating faces in the shell are now being rounded. So it's not going to create a separate feature, but it's going to be embedded within that shell. So we'll click OK and notice that it shelled the feature as well as rounded all the corners. So you can see here I've started a new part. It's a sheet metal part and I've created a sketch and I'm going to start contour flange. In Inventor 2026, it continues the, the trend. So in 2025, we saw multiple features, sheet metal features move to the modern UI. And in 2026, this is continued with contour flange, corner round, as well as the, the punch tool. The advantage to, to this modern UI is that everything's in one place. So it's kind of linear. You don't have to bounce back and forth between different tabs. You, as you select options, other options might disable. So it's a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to learn um, and just work with in general. So you can see now that it's selected the only sketch in, in the model. I'm going to change the direction. So it goes in both directions. And let's just use the on-screen manipulator to adjust the overall width of, of this new feature. Now we can see the body that it's going to, to create. So we'll just call this the, you know, the flange, or maybe we want this to be called the main flange. So we'll change that, that body name on the fly. See, we're just going to use the default for the rule. Here's the distance. I can set the direction. So maybe I want the thickness to go up and down from that, from that sketch. And I'm actually going to override the bend radius and I'm going to make it twice the, the size that it was. So we'll click OK and we can see that it created that new feature. Now let's start corner round. And with corner round, I'm going to use the enhancement that was, that was done in 2025 and I'm going to window select the edges. And right now it's set to edges, but I could also change to feature and I could just select the entire contour flange. And let's change the, the size of it. Let's make that three inches and we'll click OK. Let's create a sketch on this face. And to the sketch, I'm going to add a sketch point. And I'm going to start punch because punch is the third one of the features 
to be transitioned into the modern UI. So let's pick the D sub connector. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to change its size a bit as well as change the radius. Let's just make the radius a little bit big. It looks like I went a bit too big. So let's, let's just put that back. Let's change the connector height and let's click OK. So then what it did is inserted that punch. So nothing new from a feature perspective. What's new is the transition into that modern UI, which is cleaner and easier to work with. So that's a run through through the new part sketch and some of the general enhancements within Inventor 2026.